Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today I thought I would do a little video on building these little journals that I've really had some fun building lately. I've built two now. They're not 100% finished, but they are um, a lot of fun to make and they were inspired by our little watercolor paintings that we've been doing of bugs and uh, insects, moths, beetles, things like that. So I thought we would build one today. And uh, they're pretty rough, they're pretty rustic looking, which is what I like. Uh, they're filled with all kinds of goodies. And um, I really enjoy making these. So uh, I thought we would do some today, together. Um, let me know if this is the kind of video you like and uh, something you wanna see. We're gonna just build a little sample today and uh, we're not going to finish it. Like I said, these are not finished. The pages are not bound in yet. Um, and that's because I tend to like to stuff my journal. And then I decide whether or not uh, I need to add or remove signatures. So once these get filled, you get that kind of gator mouth looking journal, which I'm, I'm not a big fan of when it, I have this kind of cover. So I want to make sure I can remove signatures. And, uh, and then there, I find them also a lot easier to access and decorate when I can take it right out of the book and, um, and play with it and stick things down and stuff. So that's another reason that they are not 100% finished. So let me show you how I made these. Uh, this one here is made out of this old book. This old um, uh, book of praise, I guess. It's, a, it's like a music book. Uh, I loved the old cover. I paid a dollar for it at a thrift shop and I just love how beaten up it is. So we're gonna use this today. And this green one was made with an old piece of file folder. So you can use anything, anything. I, I took this, it's not super thick, but it's pretty thick, so I doubled it. I glued two pieces together. And then uh, on the front here, I finished, I taped it. And the back I haven't finished yet. Uh, but you can see there's two pieces glued together and it makes it makes a pretty sturdy cover and super inexpensive as well. So let's um, let's build this book here. Now I want to keep them the same size. Um, let me just pull this cover right off. So it's kind of like a little craft along with me video. Maybe look for some inspiration on your next project. Um, kind of get some ideas. Uh, use up some of the uh, stuff we've done together, like our paintings. Hopefully you painted along with me or sketched along with me or carved some stamps lately. And we can uh, now incorporate those in our book. It's going to take a little dollar sign off here. Isn't it the best when you find thrift books like this? That you can use every single page in this book. All the music notes, the writing, everything, and the cover. I mean, awesome. I love it. So I'm basically just going to cut this here for a second and then I'll give you some measurements in just a sec. Let me just get my bearings here. My desk is a mess as usual. I go straight into videos. <laughs> I, just, I didn't even clean between the video I just filmed and my next video. And that's just how I roll. So I'm just going to cut this. Uh, where is my cutter? Yeah, not organized. Here we go. I'll be looking for my watercolor paints in a minute. Stuff everywhere. But that's when you know you're having fun is when you're crafting away like this. I'm going to chop it just a little bit shorter of that mark. Just because I know that there's an, a little seam allowance for where it bends. side because it's such a thick book cover. I gotta go through twice. So there's one. I'm gonna double check that. There we go. That should be good. So this is four and a quarter wide by uh, five and seven eighths. <laughs> an odd number but I just again I came up with this book originally and uh, this is just the size I'm working with so I'm just going to continue working with that size 
you're just gonna trim a little bit off this and we're good to go. And then I just gotta cut a seam piece. Make sure I line that up good. You can, I can measure it as well, but just like this works as well. Just cut this little bit off here. And I just love the beaten up edge. So again, you can make this out of any kind of material you have kicking around if you happen to not have one of these old books handy you can still make one so now i want to find i think i'll take a piece of this green hard stock here just for my binding for my spine sorry so my spine's about i'm gonna say an inch and one eighth so i'm gonna cut that and you can make them as wide or as narrow as you like, depending on the size book you want. I kind of like this size. It's small little pocketbook size. I'm just lining up my cutter. I'm not over measuring. I'm just lining up the pieces that I've cut. Hopefully cut them straight. <laughs> with, a stri with this kind of cutter, I usually usually much straighter so you can see the the line here the cutter didn't go right through so i'm just going to trim that off okay let's move this guy out of the way and expose my embarrassingly messy table here now i'm working on one of these costco tables and this costco table is um it's very echoey because it's hollow underneath uh, so i do apologize for that it's something I, I need to fix and get a new table, but just not in the cards just yet. So if it's echoey, I apologize. All right, so I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of gap, say an eighth of an inch on either side, and I'm just eyeballing it. You can see nothing's cut straight on this, this green piece, but again, it's, it's a secondhand book. It's just for fun. Uh, I'm not a perfectionist by any means, so it doesn't bother me, but for those of you who it would drive crazy, go ahead and cut everything nice and straight. I'm just using some duct tape, this white stuff, and I'm going to just plonk it down and flip my book over, and then I'm going to, sorry for the noise, I'm just going to pull it down and tape the front here. I really like this tape because it's very strong and it's, as you can see, very sticky. I stuck it to the part I didn't want to stick it to. Let's see if I can get that off. <laughs> Always when the camera's rolling, right? We'll just do this. Okay. Roll it up and stick it down to the inside. And then I just kind of crease it and fold it. I like to kind of bend and soften the spine a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a older look. And there we go. I've got the outside of my book completed. So for inserts, uh, there's some, just some scrap papers that I have coffee dyed and folded in on themselves and little scraps I have kicking around from other projects that I trimmed down to fit in my book. So this guy needs a trim. And again, nothing straight for me. I just eyeball it and add it in. And then just make some signatures, as many as I think I want. And what I like to do is staple these. So I literally just, I didn't have to show you all that, just folded a bunch of scraps to fit inside this size book. And then I like to staple them in place until I'm ready to sew them. So I'll find the center here. Find the center. And I'll fold it up so I can get my stapler through there. And then I just staple right on the crease here. 
So when I'm ready to sew these in or tie them in, I can either leave the staples in or I can just remove them out of the way. And I can also, I find when I sew things in, it's more permanent. And I don't like the permanency until I am finished doing my book, if that makes sense at all. I like to be able to pull it all out and play with it. And then if I take the staples out, I can even rearrange the signatures. There's just something about um, sewing things in right away that I don't want to do. But everybody kind of builds their own journal their own way, finds their own kind of flow. Is that staple? Oops. Making a mess here. Of course, now my staple is going to malfunction. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> it's always the way, I swear. Everything's hunky dory, and then I film. All jammed up. I don't know what's going on there. All right. See, if I had editing software, this is what I would edit out. <laughs> but this is all part of it, right? Building things and going through the ups and downs. Let's see if I can get it to work. No, it's not working. Oh, there we go. Don't know what's going on. But we'll just do these two. You get the idea. So there we go. I just staple along the seam. And now I have these little signatures. And are ready for my journal. And they would go in here. And I can decorate them as I go. I'll just put these aside. So I have four. But as I add things, like this one... I think I had five in this one, and now I'm down to three because I'm adding so much stuff in there. It starts to get thicker and thicker. Okay. But the best part, of course, is the cover. That's my favorite part. So I think we'll do another watercolor. Of um, I'm thinking maybe a moth again. I just really love the watercolor simplicity on these. Let me just cut this straight. So I'll need my cutter again. And then I'm going to corner one of the edges here. Find my corner cutter. Ooh, yep, there it is. And then I know I've got the right size to play with on my drawing like this so I know that that's going to fit perfect in there and I can glue it down once I've painted it so I'm thinking of a moth today so let's let's paint let's do it so I'm going to just give myself the center line I have done um, a video on some insects on how to have fun watercoloring them and experimenting with them but we're gonna do another one here so I'm gonna do a furry head here I like moths more than I like butterflies I find they are uh, do I have my other pencil this one's a bit messy no I find they are a bit uh, more intriguing when it comes to their patterns and their wing shapes are kind of cool. So we're gonna go up and way out, bring it back in and loop down here. And I'm gonna give it a back wing. So we'll come down like this, out from behind that wing, and really scoop it. I think my head is too far forward. So I'm gonna fix that in a minute. Go back this way. So this is the biggest challenge is making it uh, symmetrical. So I can already tell this wing's much bigger. So I might move where where the body is. But again, it's just about having fun 
playing with watercolor, playing with your sketching and decorating your book. make this guy a little bit bigger and I think I'm just going to move his body just a little so I think they're roughly the same size just move his body and his head a little shorter he's got these really fun winged feathers at the front of his head another feather and then his fat little body underneath. And remember our contour lines. And then we can put some really pretty shaping in him, like design. I love these kind of eyes they have in the back is to deter predators. And just some squiggly lines here for a pattern. Another eye down here. Clean up this line. Just want to clean up the lines so they don't all show through the watercolor. And I'm just going to have some fun playing with colors here. Maybe continue that pattern. And then a little leg out the front. And the rest of his legs are underneath his big wings which we can't see. And then maybe a little pattern on the edge here. Just squiggle, just squiggly line. There, I think he'll make a fun cover if we can pull the colors off. Neat, so I did a blue one, so I think I'm gonna do an orange one on this. And find my watercolor, my paper towel, and my brushes. So this is a number 10 watercolor brush. And these are my um, Mei Liang watercolor paints that I've used in several videos now. Quite like them. I did a product review on them and now I use them all the time. They've got some great color variation. So I do really enjoy them. Just gonna move some stuff, sorry. Very noisy. There we go. So some water, my paper towel, and some paint. So I can pull the legend out here so you can see what colors I'm using in case you want to paint this guy with me. So I'll put that there. And I'm going to go into the cadmium orange. I'm going to start with the light colors and a thin wash. I'm just gonna give it a light wash of this nice orange all over. And again, uh, pretty loose. I am staying more in the lines this time than I normally do with my watercolor. But I've been really enjoying painting these insects and I think it's just because there's no rules when it comes to colors. Um, it's a really great way to experiment with watercolor if you're new to it or you're just learning like me and you're having fun with it. Uh, you can just create these little specimen cards and not worry about the final result because they're tiny little cards and you're just having fun with it. I'm going to go into uh, cadmium so sorry, that was orange yellow I used. Now I'm going into the cadmium orange and I'm gonna drop some color in. So this is a wet on wet now. Before when we applied that first layer, that was wet on dry. So this, the watercolor paint we just applied is still wet and we're just dabbing in this color. And this is another really fun way to experiment with watercolors is how wet something is and how dry something is can really have fun with that. If you want a little bit more control on where your paint is going, of course you would wait for things to dry a little bit. So we're just painting one today. We're not going to have a lot of dry time in between. So I'm going to try and absorb as much as I can so that it can dry. 
as we go. So I don't want to make a muddy mess. I'm just going to play with the colors here a little bit. So you can play with the intensity of the color. You can play with the amount of water you're using. You can play with mixing colors on top as they're wet, seeing what happens, dropping colors in. And now this is a watercolor brush. So what's nice about this watercolor brush is I can remove and absorb paint and water with it. So you can't really do that with a super cheap brush. So it does sometimes pay to have a, a nice watercolor brush. So now I'm going to go into my cadmium red. And I think what I'll add is a tiny bit of, let's add a tiny bit of blue to it. So this is light sky blue. I want kind of a a brown red here without using brown. It's a nice kind of deep auburny color. And I'm gonna drop that in. And again, I don't know what's gonna happen with the paints, where it will separate, uh, will it absorb, would it will repel other colors. I don't know, and that's the really fun part about watercolor. Just pick the colors you like and go for it. I keep doing these kind of video tutorials because I really love doing this. You guys might be a little sick of my bugs by now. I can't help it though, it's just so much fun. if I can get it in there without bleeding it into the wings because the wings are wet. And make it a little here. Little scales. I don't know, uh, they're kind of feathery. I'm sure they have a name. Little legs. Take a little bit off here, make that a little bit brighter orange after. Just playing with the paint. Okay, a little bit back here. And of course you can add pen to this after. You can draw in more details with the pen. And you can use those Posca markers or any kind of white marker that sits on top of paint for more details. It's just so much fun. Pop those eyes a little bit. Okay. And then what else can we do? I'd like to add some blue in here. So let's go into that, um, that sky blue. Wipe that, put that here. And I think I'd like to do maybe kind of like a mint green. So I'm gonna add some tree green to that. And there is a white in this watercolor paint which traditional watercolor paint doesn't use white. You use the white of the paper, but I want kind of a minty color. So I'm gonna add some of that white, some blue. So you can see, you can really have fun playing, creating colors. Let's see if I like this. A soft mint color. I don't want to go too close to the outside because it will contaminate it all. And then maybe introducing a little bit in here. So 
really pretty color. Kind of contrasts with the orange quite nicely. A little bit on his body. Little dabs. And just see what it does, how it reacts. I really love the transparentness of watercolor paint. Something really appealing about it. Delicate and can achieve some really beautiful effects with watercolor paint and if you get really good at it. You know, especially when you play with lighting and things like that. And really play with the white of the paper. Intense colors. So there's nothing to fear in watercolor. You just want to have some fun. Just want to experiment and give it a go. Just going to intensify the orange on his head. And then I think we need a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to add some. Um, so this is coal black into that dark brown. And I'm going to just see if I can intensify his wings just a little without getting his body. Normally I would let this dry, but for video's sake, I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast in here while it's wet. And the reason I would let it dry is because it does this sort of thing and I want a little bit more detail right now. So you can obviously go down to a much smaller brush if you wanted to. Maybe we will. Maybe I'll let this dry a minute. Let's let this dry just for a second while we play with the book a little more. Um, I like to add a piece of paper to the back, like a piece of coffee dyed paper, so that it kind of softens that white, that bright white um, pa uh, tape that I'm not overly fond of the look of. So I like to tone it down a little with some paper. So we'll do that while we're waiting. And again, I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing. I'm gonna cut across here. And then maybe about here, and we'll see if I need to adjust it after. so I have to cut it just a little bit thinner. Say about there. This way. Maybe even a maybe even a little bit thinner. <laughs> just a wee bit. And I love these journals because they're tiny, they fit in my purse, I can um, create any theme out of the book I want, and I, I just love that. I love these little books, and they're a great way to use up a lot of scraps because they're small. They're fun to decorate, at least in my opinion. This is kind of uh, the size I like to play with. Every now and then I'll do a bigger one. I really like the little guys and I find they're kind of quick too. They're not overly time consuming. I'll slap that down. That's just cheapy dollar store glue, but it works great if you have the patience to let things sit and dry. So I like the little edges there and then I'll take some ink and kind of dirty things up a little bit because I do like the grungy look. Not overly grungy, but a little, a little darker. Let's use my little one. This guy right here. These little minis are great. So I just kind of dirty the tape. 
it's already the edges. Make sure they're glued. I just like to tone down that white paper for sure. It's just a little too, too neat for me. I would even add, say, um, I don't have any left, but you could add uh, a washi tape on it right here, or in my case, I usually use it like a medical tape, um, but I don't have any left, so I have to get some more. And I love the look of the medical tape. This is the medical tape here. So it's kind of like a fabric, a really thin coat of fabric tape. And I like it because it looks really grungy. Stick that down a little more like that. Okay. I don't know how close you guys are. Maybe move you up a little bit. Sorry. I hope you're all in frame there. My camera thing is falling on me. I need a new one. One day. So now I think I'll decide to put the uh, broken at the bottom here. So this will be my front cover, which I really like. And we could always decorate something while we're waiting for that to dry. So I had painted um, a couple of other bugs and then I went and photocopied them. So I thought these would be kind of fun to incorporate in. And I did a video on how to paint some of these. I'm not which, sure which one we painted. I can't remember. But they're just so much fun. And like I said, you take your art and you photocopy it. And use it over and over again. So this guy. I think we did this one in the video. I really like him. And the dragonfly. I like dragonfly too. Let's use the dragonfly. I'm just going to cut them out and paste them in while we're just waiting for that watercolor to dry a little bit. Just so we can put some more details in it. So you just take your artwork, photocopy it, or scan it and, digit and enhance it more with digitals if you wanted to. And just create these really cute pages. So I'm just going to glue that down. Need my glue stick. Glue it down like that. And create a little pocket. So normally I would use double-sided tape, but I don't have any right now because it's at my workplace. I'm teaching some seniors to journal. So exciting, I love it. So I'm just gonna use some glue. I got a little tuck spot there on that page. And then maybe just glue this guy here. We'll dirty him up a bit. You can see why my desk is always a mess. <laughs> like always a mess. <laughs> because I just go ahead and ink stuff up wherever I want. <laughs> I don't have a lot of discipline in that department. Just to tone down that paper just a little bit. I think I'm just going to glue him right into the page. So you can journal at the top. And like I said, I like to decorate all of my pages. Have them ready before I anchor them into the book. So I can rearrange these signatures if I want to. Take the staples out, move them. So you take your little watercolor, photocopy it, print it, and now you can use it several times. So I think we'll just glue him as well somewhere. Something fun. Some interesting page when you flip through the book. And maybe when uh, I finish these, we'll do a flip through video either on this channel or on Instagram. Just show you how much fun these can be. I hope you build one. I hope, I really hope you give the insects a, a go because I know a lot of people don't like insects, but there's just something so interesting about them and unique. I just love them. A little stag beetle here. And truly, they're quite fascinating when you think about them and all their little intricate bits and pieces. 
and their camouflage and their defense mechanisms. Just so cool. So I'll do that. And then um, I like to fill my journal with things. Is this dry actually? We'll do a little bit on, more on this so it has time to dry again. And then I'll show you some of the stuff I used to fill in my journals. So let me just go to my small little brush here. And this is just a junky brush. I don't have, um, I don't have uh, an actual good tiny watercolor brush yet. It's in the works one day. <laughs> I don't treat my brushes very well. So I try not to buy expensive ones. I'll treat myself to a good brush occasionally. I just want to see if I can add just a touch more detail without overkill. Because if I want to put exact detail in, I'll even use a pen to maybe just separate the wing a little bit visually here. Put some markings in. It's still a little bit wet. And remember, watercolor paint will dry much lighter than when it first goes on. Just a little darker on the back. A little bit around his eyes here. I really like that soft bluey green kind of seafoam color against this orange. And just add a little bit more black. Kind of really pop that contrast a little more. for fun. Put some more details in him. There. I mean, you can keep going and keep going. I like the way he's looking. Of course, I'm going to add some gold to him because I love the shimmer. Just pull out just a few details here. There. I like that. He pops. Okay, where's my gold paint? I'll put it in this little watercolor journal we built. Also another video, how to build a little fold up watercolor journal. They're great. And then I have my little tin here. And I only have the one gold left. I'm running low, I have to get some more. I think I might just treat myself to some metallic paints, metallic watercolor paints because I'm really loving the gold. So if I had like a metallic blue or metallic orange, that would look so fun on here. So I'm gonna just drop this in I don't know if you can actually see the gold from the bird's eye view on the camera, but I will try and move it after so you can see. And I just find it just elevates the watercolor one more, one more step, because who doesn't love gold? <laughs> and I'm just gonna dab it in and move it so I can actually see it as well, where I might wanna put it. I think I'll put some coming up on his wing here. It will change the color of the paint underneath, especially if you're using it thick like I am. It's more opaque that way. Oops, what's that? But it's so fun. I'll just do a couple of spots. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know. Hopefully you can see it. All right, I think that's good. We're gonna let that dry. I think we'll leave him be for now. We'll let that dry. We'll go back to um, decorating a cup, just a couple of pages. 
so I have my little tray of things that I have built already. A little ephemera here, little scraps. I think we all have this as journalers. We all have little bundles to add. Um, where did my pages go? Where did I put them? Here. So I like to just take these and add them to my book. So I showed a video on how I kind of store these and use them when I'm ready. So I've built these little things and now I'm ready just to add them to a journal. So I can stick that in there. Maybe build another pocket with another page here. So like fold this over. I sure do miss my double-sided tape when I don't have it. I, I find double-sided tape so handy. Especially if you're a messy gluer like me. Just fold that in like that. Ink the edge. This is the funnest part. The, the covers and decorating the pages is what it's all about for me anyways. So this is where I'd use the double-sided tape for a neater look. But this will do. And I can take something out of this. That I've put together. Let's see if I find one maybe with a butterfly on it or another bug. I might not. I can't remember what I made. Here's a little spider. That's fun. Shove that in there. And so I love, that's what I love about building these little things up is they're ready to use. They're ready to go. And you can just start decorating your page. It's, like to leave a lot of blank pages. You could stamp in here what's in this one. And then you can, these are little, little matchbooks, look. So these were business cards, I believe. And then I just build these little ephemera pockets with them that you can add in. And you can just add that to a page here. with a simple little paper clip. This would be a nice page to stamp, but I don't have all that out right now. And what else do I have? This is really cute. So that would be fun to add to a page. And then sometimes you can just put things in where you can finalize where you want them later as well. There's no need to uh, fill it all, right? So this is kind of pretty. Maybe just stick that to a page. Right here. Use a little heavier duty glue for this because it's watercolor paper. And just fill your book with your pre-made ephemeras, your sketches, your stamps, all your little goodies you have kicking around. What else have I got over here? I've got a mess is what I've got. <laughs> I think that's all I brought out. Oh, I have these. I did a video on these as well. How to make mass little prints like this, which are really great for um, instant ephemera. So this, if my stapler's working, I'll staple in and just do a little tuck spot here. I like the look of a stapler. Um, I know it's not the neatest look, but I like the metal. I like to incorporate the element of metal in here as well. So there's a little tuck spot for another stamp. These are just stamped index cards ready to go. So you can see how fast and you can see how thick they're starting to get, which is why if it's not fixed in there, I can just simply take um take a whole signature out before my book gets too full put my paint away before I lose it and let's see how dry this is it's almost there I think it's dry enough to try and glue it <laughs> so I like again a bit of a grungy look so because my book cover is also old and grungy I want to include it 
and I tone down this paper just a little. I think I will add just a little bit of black pen to this. So this is my Uniball Vision pen. Um, it's an Inkflow pen and it is waterproof. Not that that really matters now because we have finished watercoloring, but if you chose to do more watercolor, you do want a waterproof pen so that it doesn't bleed when you add water. I'm just gonna throw in maybe just a few little details here. Again, you just have fun playing. I hope you have fun anyways. I hope you're crafting along with me. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to see more of this type of watercolor or journal making. Uh, what maybe you would like to see is always great feedback for me. Uh, if there's anything you, you've always wanted to paint or... I don't always get to everything that's re requested. Um, sometimes I just want to do what I want to do, but I, I do try to answer everyone or try to do something along the lines of what's been requested. Some things I just don't like painting. I've had a, a request for faces and things and I just, I'm not one for painting faces or drawing faces for that matter. It's just not something I enjoy doing, so I avoid it. <laughs> Um, maybe dirty it up just a tad more and then we'll glue it down and give it a nice vintage look and then I find the glue gets kind of messy too which adds to the grunge and you'll see what I mean in a minute <laughs> oh the watercolor paper I was using is this um, stiff more 140 pound paper so it's a decent quality paper it's not top end or anything but it is it's not a cheapy watercolor paper and it was cut into these little mini postcards which was great little sizes so you can paint and send somebody something which is kind of fun and this is my last piece actually I've used it all but just in case you're wondering what watercolor paper I was using and I forgot to mention it so here we go and put this down center it as best I can and get that glue to ooze out so I know it is stuck really good and what I like about the glue is it grunges the paper even more so you can see this book is really falling apart I love that and there's enough room to put something down here if you wanted you could put uh, some writing in here or the name of the book or whatever you want. Just want to push that down just so it holds the middle for one second. <laughs> and that's it. That's uh, that's today's little video on these cute little specimen journals, I guess you could call them, where you really could collect a bunch of specimens and add them in, make um, those kind of what are they called with the specimen cards would be really fun. So now I have three. And again, just out of recycled books, a recycled book or a recycled folder and your own artwork on the cover. And I think it's really pretty. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you paint along with me. I hope you hit the subscribe button and uh, check out my Etsy store. And that helps me a lot as well for the channel. Uh, for supporting it and continuing doing videos. And again, any suggestions you might have, uh, let me know. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.